Folksy Friend, and on this channel I talk about folk literature and folk beliefs. And on Tuesdays we talk about Tolkien. If any of that sounds interesting, please think about subscribing. Today is Tuesday, so here we go with Tolkien. We are working through the Silmarillion right now, and although I've got some awesome comments and I am taking the recommendations to buy the Histories of Middle-earth series, I don't have it yet, so everything I say right now is going to be based pretty much primarily in the Silmarillion itself. Also, just a quick note, I had a comment on um, a previous video regarding my pronunciation of names and places, especially words that are in Quenya and have pretty distinct pronunciations, although the comment um, when I went to reply to it was gone, so I don't know if that commenter decided to delete it or what happened there, but I did want to address it. I really want to be accurate with the pronunciations in the way that Tolkien intended them to be pronounced. But that being said, I'm still really new at this. I'm trying to figure out the best way to, you know, record. I stumble over my words a lot and I end up recording sentences like half a dozen times. So if there's a time where I have to say something like Valinor five times, by the end I may have dropped the pronunciation without even really realizing it. I didn't realize it was noticeable, but I guess it really is. So I just want to say that I'm going to be making um, a very concentrated effort to keep my pronunciations correct. And if there are ever things that are irksome or just suggestions that anyone has for how to improve my videos, please feel free to let me know. Okay, with that being said, let's get into it. The elves have just awoken in Middle-earth, which is pretty much still under the control of Melkor. The Valar are in Valinor, and they don't know that the elves are awake yet. The elves are beside Kuivienen, which is a bay in the inland sea of Helkar. The sea is in the far east to the north, where the roots of the mountain that held up Ilwin once was. Ilwin was one of the great lamps that lit up the world before Melkor destroyed them. The world was pretty much thrown into chaos when the lamps went down. Fires, floods, calamity. So from what I understand, the Sea of Helkar was created by water flowing down from the northeast and into the space where Ilwin once stood. When the elves awake beside Kuivienen, they hear the sound of flowing water and see the bright stars above, which Varva had just finished kindling. Long they dwelt in their first home by the water under stars, and they walked the earth in wonder. The elves create their own language and name themselves the Quendi, or those who speak with voices. They chose that name because they hadn't seen any other creature that could speak. The first elves were stronger and more powerful than they are in the time of Lord of the Rings. But Tolkien does tell us that their beauty is as majestic in the current age as it was in the beginning. Now one day, Arome was back in Middle-earth hunting evil, and by chance he went into the east. As he came near the Orokarni, the mountains of the east, his horse Nahar stopped walking and started neighing loudly. Orome sat there for a while, trying to figure out what it was that Nahar was sensing, and then, in the distance, he heard singing. Thus it was that the Valar found at last, as it were by chance, those whom they had so long awaited. And Arome, looking upon the elves, was filled with wonder. Arome looks at these beautiful, shiny elves and immediately loves them. But they are not as taken with him. In fact, they are terrified to see him coming towards them. And that was because of Melkor. If you remember, Melkor had free reign over Middle-earth for over a thousand years while the Valar were in Valinor. Melkor knew about the elves long before Orome stumbled across them. He sent his minions to spy on and scare them. If any elves left their main settlement alone or in small groups, they would often disappear. They were terrified. Shadows stalked them in the mountains around Kuivienen, and a dark rider on a wild horse would chase them. You see, Melkor was afraid of Orome, and what he feared, he hated. So Melkor had his servants appear as riders, so that if Orome were ever to find the elves, they wouldn't trust him. 
and they didn't at first. When the elves heard Nahar's neighs, some of them hid and some ran. Those were snatched up by Melkor's minions. Only those who stood their ground were able to see that Arome wasn't the dark creature that had been stalking them. Arome stayed with the elves for a while and learned about the danger they were in. Then he rode straight back to Valinor to share what he had learned with the Valar. The Valar were happy to learn the elves had awoken, but they knew now it was time to take action against Melkor. He was no longer a threat that they could leave be. While they debated what should be done, Arome went straight back to the elves. Manwe went up to the tippy top of Tiniquitil to communicate with Iluvatar to try to figure out what the best course of action was. And when he was finished, he came down and called a meeting of the Valar. They gathered in the Ring of Doom, and even Ulmo came out of the sea to join them. Manwe declared that they had to take control of Middle-earth back from Melkor. Tulkas was ready to rumble. But Aule was upset because he knew that this battle was going to cause irreparable damage to Middle-earth. But despite his fear and his grief, all the Valar prepared for war. Thank you for spending some time with me here today as I talked about Tolkien. This was a shorter video, so I will be posting my next one before next Tuesday. So I hope you'll join me as I discuss the War of the Powers the great fight between the Valar and Melkor. This conflict is what sparks Melkor's deep hatred of the elves, a hatred that will end up maiming Valinor itself. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like, and I hope you will join me for my discussion of the War of the Powers soon. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.